finish it. There's something undeniable about it. There's something really powerful about a beautifully made tool. And when you look at it, you know, it's easy to mock. It's easy to mock, uh, particularly from guys who maybe you're uh, older and more angry about that. But uh, a beautifully painted handle, I think, speaks to this legacy and meaning, value, tools being the, the way in which we express uh, you know, our creative vision for what the world can be. You know, I found myself, we have our like 10 minutes of winter here. Uh, so over the holiday break, I was out splitting some logs, getting them stacked up for our, our little chimney outside. And I was using the claw of a hammer, right? So I flipped my hammer around, I was trying to split uh, these hickory logs with, with the claw of the hammer. It's just super frustrated, you know? You know, it's, it's just silly. We were using the wrong tool. And it got me thinking about this idea of uh, uh, the way in which tools kind of sit between us and uh, the work that we're doing, right? Uh, you know, if you want to get like real crazy on this, there's, there's uh, philosophy or philosophers devoted to this. Martin Heidegger and after him, Maurice Molo Ponty, who have this idea that, that our being is mediated through tools and as fit as the tool is for the job so is our experience of the world through that tool right so when you're using the claw of a hammer you're not thinking about the work that you're doing you're not able to immerse in it uh, because you're constantly thinking about how the claw of a hammer doesn't split wood right so but that started me you know I, I kind of go on on a tear with that and started thinking about uh, you know my own family story remembering with my grandpa uh, you know, swinging his little plastic, yellow plastic handled, uh, I don't even know what axe that was, like learning to split logs and stack them up so that uh, we, had, <laughs> we had wood uh, to burn in his fireplace, right? Uh, and then thinking all the way through to, you know, like living in the middle of the city, uh, putting a little fire out on the back patio and wanting to get back to some of that, some of that story. And then even projecting it further back, right? Like we're out here in the West, uh, it's maybe no other tool more central in the American expansion to the West, other than an ax, right? That, that an ax was the way by which Western settling could be done, right? On the frontier, you come out with uh, this tool and your experience of the world is mediated through that. So I started looking into, um, you know, who, did, who does this right? What's the story of, uh, you know, forging an ax head and putting a handle on it and who's been doing it prior to, you know, kind of mass production, industrial, run down to the hardware store and grab one. And I realized it's all the stuff that we're into. It's really cool. I mean, the, the pattern of the ax head, that's all regional specific, right? So, uh, you know, the, the Midwest has a type of pattern and, uh, you know, the New Jersey pattern is really cool. And then if you go across uh, the Atlantic, there's different patterns coming out of, of different places on the continent. And, uh, that was really exciting to me to see that there's this vernacular, there's this emerging language of uh, the form of an accent. And then uh, that pattern itself too, we found some, some uh, old plates from like 19th century shop manuals that reference this idea that no, no craftsman in his own right would be found without uh, his particular axe pattern handle. We got to expect that this handle is going to break down. Right? There's going to be a separation that happens between, I mean, the handle's going to split around the steel axe head. So uh, recreating a handle has to be done relatively efficiently and even should take on the flavor of the individual user, right? So uh, an axe pattern shaped to your own hands speaks to, I guess, uh, some of what a Heidegger was getting at, this idea that, that our relationship to the world is mediated between these tools and we have to be conscious, it, those of us who are going to make uh, anything from tooling to, uh, you know, what a architecture out in the world, have to be conscious of the fact that that mediation is happening, right? We want, we want the best possible tool uh, so that it slips into the background. So that got me chasing this and I thought, you know, let's, let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can order up some vintage heads and, and touch them up to the grinder 
<clears throat> reshape them, uh, file them back down, and then and then make our own pattern, make our own handle pattern. And I think when you do it, when you finish it, there's something undeniable about it. There's something really powerful about a beautifully made tool. Uh, and when you look at it, you know, it's easy to mock. It's easy to mock, uh, particularly from guys who maybe you're uh, older and more angry about that, but uh, a beautifully painted handle, I think, speaks to this legacy of, uh, uh, and meaning, value, tools, being the, the way in which we express uh, you know, our creative vision for what the world can be. Uh, so that's what I was after, trying to get, uh, you know, something beautiful to use out on the patio, something the boys would want to come out and use, uh, and, you know, something that you hang up above the fireplace, and it means something. <laughs> First off, first off, first off Ser det som ett allt är det jag vill wifea De här jadis, jadis De vill ju bara dra ner oss Men du är fett och vanlig På det jag lägger all min tid Jag vill ha det, ha det Du får mig känna safety Mer kan du ner det baby Och jag kommer aldrig ändra mig So for me, my great grandpa Magnus, and talking about dovetailed casework, even though he couldn't do that. What he was recalling is a type of tool that we aren't getting anymore, right? So to paint up uh, plunger handles and mock what Bestmade was doing, I think is really short-sighted. It's a really, it's a, it's a genuine misunderstanding of, uh, I think, the call that a lot of us feel to make beautiful things with beautiful things, right? So we're gonna paint up our axe handle, even though that paint's gonna wear down over time. Uh, I think still in there is that story of desiring a beautiful space and wanting to make that space with beautiful things.